I don't know if I need to introduce this man who needs no introduction, but talk about a gift. I just need to sit down. Yeah. Talk about a gift to the community. Here's a male version right here. Gil Stork. Welcome to Cuesta College, and welcome to another great marriage between Cuesta College and the San Luis Obispo Community Foundation. Appreciate it very much. Um, this is the 40th anniversary of Women of Distinction Awards, and I'm Gil Stork, and I'm the president of Cuesta College. And we're extremely pleased to once again have this collaboration with the Community Foundation of San Luis Obispo County and to recognize and to celebrate the contributions that women have made in the areas of volunteering, in the community, their profession, and in philanthropy. A little history about Cuesta College's involvement with the women of, uh, Women's History Month and the Women of Distinction Awards Ceremony. Cuesta College's participation in recognizing women in history actually started before Congress passed the national designation. In the mid-1970s, yes, I was still working there here then, <laughs> and before, Cuesta College held a women's conference, an all-day event with a keynote speaker to promote women as leaders and to understand the role of women in history. Over the years, the event has evolved to include awards. The first award was given in 1987 to Arlene Chandler, who was the first to be recognized as the Woman of the Year. In 1990, the program expanded to four awards, Progress for Women, the Community and Public Service Professional Award, the Community and Public Service Volunteer Award, and Women in Education. Depending upon who was in charge of the event, the program morphed each year. It was on Saturdays, then it became a week-long celebration, then a few days, then back to Saturday, and in 2005 was moved to a Friday lunch and then finally, a reception, so. In 2014, we forged this wonderful partnership between Cuesta College and the Community Foundation of San Luisville County Women's Legacy Fund. So in order to continue to raise awareness and recognition of the contribution that women have made uh, in, the, in the community. This brings us to 2017 and the 40th year of this uh, celebration. Thank you. Now, to masterfully guide us through this process today, it's my pleasure to introduce the MC for today, who actually doesn't need any introduction because he's already hogged the stage a couple of times. <laughs> and most of you know or have heard of or have been faced with Betsy Nash. <laughs> Betsy is the owner of Nash HR Services that specialize in the field of human resources for businesses of all sizes. She has been an HR, an HR specialist for more than 25 years. Betsy is also a popular newspaper columnist and a former award-winning radio talk uh, host show, a show host. Betsy's been in love with the Central Coast since she moved here to attend Cal Poly in 1969. 1969? <laughs> I started in 1959 at Cal Poly. So <laughs> you're just a kid. She, like many of us, did whatever she could to stay here. Uh, Betsy brags that the first class she ever took where she applied what she learned the very next day was a real estate law class right here at Cuesta College, which she took for her job in title insurance business. 48 years later, she still loves this place and has served it in many ways, including the Cuesta College Foundation Board of Directors and the Women's, Women's Legacy Fund Advisory Committee. We are fortunate to have Betsy with us today to host the 40th Annual Women of Distinction Awards Ceremony. So please join me in a warm welcome for Betsy Nash. Boy, it got quiet all of a sudden. Thank you. Uh, I really do have a bleeding heart for this community and a bleeding heart for Cuesta, for sure, and, and the Women's Legacy Fund, absolutely. So I kind of feel like I'm a collaboration between Cuesta 
and the Women's Legacy Fund and the Community Foundation uh, just as much as this event is. How many of you have been here before? Nice, nice. How many of you received a Women of Distinction Award here? You, I want to stand up and have us recognize you. You know, we're only going to honor about five women today, but in addition to those who just stood up, there's probably, oh, 20 times as many women, uh, distinguished women here today, and that's what makes this such an incre incredible event and such an incredible community. So we had some names showing behind me, and I'm sure you saw some from years ago and also some more recent, and uh, I hope you'll continue to uh, support those women and let them empower you uh, to lead distinguished lives if you don't already, okay? Um, so it's collaboration between Quest. I gotta look through my notes here because Gil said half my speech. <laughs> I guess, I was thinking though in, in getting ready for some remarks about this that this has been a rough year for women. I mean, really, 2017, really? Um, in 1977, when Cuesta started this, uh, Gerald Ford pardoned Tokyo Rose. For those of you who don't know Tokyo Rose, Google it. Uh, d d Jimmy Carter pardoned the Vietnam draft dodgers. I would have thought by 40 years later that women, strong women in the world would have been pardoned for being phenomenal. The time? Okay. Forget pardon, how about accepted, supported, embraced, thanked, promoted? Uh, the fact that we have events like this, it was so new in 1977. We started the Women's uh, Network in San Luis in 78 and 79. And it was a, a network of, of women in business. We had to teach each other how to dress and how to talk and how to shake hands. I think Roxanne Carr was one of our only role models who was already doing all those things. <laughs> But, you know, you held my mortgage on my house, I think about then, so I wasn't even talking to you. <laughs> in the four year, 40 years since 1977, even a princess in Star Wars became a general. And so I sure as heck thought by now there'd be more women running the country. So still we rise, right? Still we rise. And so we're here. 20th such recognition of women who have blazed trails, set standards of excellence and serve the community. The first was Arlene Chandler, you mentioned. If you know Arlene Chandler, you know this quiet, wonderful woman, and that means that the bar was set really high back then uh, for recognizing Women of the Year. I remember one gathering late in, uh, in the 80s, and the junior senator from California was supposed to come and speak, but she was, I don't want to say held up, but in Washington, D.C., uh, having to do, be an, do another vote of some sort. So she called us. So Barbara Boxer called us from the plane, and it was broadcast. I think we were in the, in the, weren't we in, we were in the cafeteria. There were 12 of us, I think, at the event. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, and it was so amazing to have this wonderful technology where, did Grace talk to her on the phone? Or did she just talk? Oh, okay, thanks a lot. I, I can't remember either. <laughs> what I mean is, it was like trailblazing at the time, and now Barbara Boxer has, has retired. Um, but she called from the plane, and I remember that, oh, we're on the map. This is important in San Luis Obispo. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to share was that I still regard a 1990 recipient of the Community and Public Service uh, Distinguished Award as one of my most inspiring mentors, Lois Barber. Like many recipients, soft-spoken, one of those quiet forces of nature, accomplishes remarkable, sometimes small things, but they add up over time. And they make the community and our world so much better for it. As a matter of fact, when, while well, I, not soft-spoken, um, <laughs> Lois and others were organizing the first Create Peace Week. I learned uh, an incredibly valuable lesson that uh, still stays with me and I, and I will always remember. Um, I learned that even though I'm a Leo, 
I'm not necessarily going to accomplish one really terrific thing or 12 or 15 that's going to change the world. Tough lesson for Leo. What I could do and must do, in the words of Mother Teresa, was to do many small things with great love. And that's who we are. Now, we're going to recognize some very special women here today, and we have in years past, but that's what we all are and need to do. And we do. Otherwise, I would have moved away a long time ago. So through the years, we brought the spotlight to the women of distinction who've done small things and big. And after a few years, as Gil said, there came this great collaboration between the Women's Legacy Fund of the Community Foundation and Cuesta College, who's always been there for us. So um, I guess my theme today is, and still we rise, uh, because what else are we going to do, right? Um, in addition to the awards, each winner will be receiving recognition from the local, state, and national levels. And I'm so pleased to see many elected officials have joined us here today. I'm going to read the names of the, uh, those who are bringing official recognition for our winners. And please hold your applause till the end. So that you, and then remember their names so you can lobby them to have them <laughs> continue to support women in concrete and significant ways. Um, Congressman uh, Salud Carbajal is represented by District Representative Erica Reyes. San Luis Board of Supervisors rep, uh, represented today by Supervisor John Pashong and Caleb Mott, the assistant to Supervisor Compton. City of San Luis Obispo, Mayor Heidi Harmon, Council Members Christensen, Carlin Christensen, and Andy Pease. And then Senator, uh, State Senator William Monning and Assemblyman Jordan Cunningham uh, all sent certificates as well. Please again, elected officials, even if I didn't say your name, would you stand up? We want to thank you for being here. So our first award today, community service, commun excuse me, community and public service in the professional category, awarded to a woman who has, by virtue of her profession, distinguished herself by outstanding professional service to the community. So I'd like to invite Millie Drum up to the stage to introduce this year's award winner, Nancy Walker. And Nancy, will you also please come up? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the Community Foundation for this opportunity to recognize such wonderful woman, women. I'm Millie Drum. I'm the board president of the Wellness Kitchen and Resource Center. And as many of you may know, I'm a writer. So when I think about the word distinction, these words come to mind. Merit, excellence, quality, talent, worth, knowledge, insight, and there is one more important word that describes Nancy Walker, and that is compassion. I've known Nancy since 2008, before even she realized that the wellness kitchen was in her future. To honor her mom Julia's cancer survival, Nancy intended to open a B&B focused on healthy living, a place where moms and daughters and couples could learn how to live a healthy life. But her life path changed to a new direction. She attended a culinary school that cooked with butter and salt. <laughs> Not necessarily healthy eating. She transferred to Bowman College, learning about holistic nutrition and culinary arts. She learned to appreciate the sun, the earth, and the farmer's hands as they grew the food. In 2010, she established the Wellness Kitchen, creating the healing food and wellness food programs and ongoing education. The response was wonderful. She needed a bigger kitchen to meet the growing need. There is no other nonprofit in Slow County that provides pre-ordered meals, nutritional education, and support. In 2012, the kitchen moved across from Twin Cities Hospital in the heart of the Templeton medical community, thanks to the generosity 
of Dr. Sanjay Gampoulet, who owns the building. Nancy could more easily reach those who are in critical need, especially cancer patients, with nutritious food and support for their families and caregivers. There have been many challenges to be the founder, executive director, and therapeutic chef of the Wellness Kitchen and Resource Center. Staff changes, building a board of directors, the ever-changing team of volunteers, and the essential need for funding. In the early years before Nancy had a solid staff and team of volunteers, she shopped for groceries, cooked, cleaned, strained the broth, greeted our patrons, taught classes, spoke at community events and meetings, and locked the door at the end of the day. But through it all, Nancy knows and stays true to her belief that together we can help everyone. So I'm happy to say now her staff is in place. Her volunteers log an average of 500 hours per month. She has a team of educators and a class schedule. And these are the statistics that really bring all of this home. On a typical week at the kitchen, an average of 200 meals for 70 to 75 patrons through the Wellness Foods program are prepared by volunteers, and a portion of those patrons are in South County. Volunteers prepare over 140 quarts of various broths. 20 to 25 low-income patrons receive free healing foods and broths through our Pay It Forward program, which is based on donations. Nancy works with community partners, Hearst Cancer Resource Center, Cancer Support Community, Jack's Helping Hand, Cancer Connection, and others. She's recently expanded the Wellness and Healing Foods program to the coast through Cambria Connection. And one of the things that she really enjoys is mentoring and teaching uh, teens, through a, to teens who are looking for a, a culinary career and our program director, Yesenia, who is reaching out to our Hispanic community and that she's educating children and these Hispanic mothers as far as how to really take care of their families with good nutrition. So just a couple more comments. I'm almost finished. Jennifer Hammond is our kitchen manager. She's over here in this, the table with all of our staff and volunteers. And I just wanted to share a few words from her because she's been with Nancy for a long time. Nancy's gift of organization and attention to detail have created an atmosphere at the Wellness Kitchen where volunteers are happy to work. Nancy's motto is, are you proud of it? The food going out of the Wellness Kitchen is made with love to be wholesome, principally organic, locally grown, cooked to the delicious yum factor. She cares deeply for her working staff, volunteers and patrons. Our joy is to hear her read testimonials and thank you notes from recipients of the food, broths and teas that we prepare. So we would all love to say bravo to Nancy for dedicating these years of your life to bringing our community this opportunity to participate in the healthy food revolution. And it's really out there. You think about that. Healthy food revolution. We love you. We respect you. We can all be a part of it. And as Nancy says, together we can help everyone. Nancy Walker. Thank you so much. I'm a strong believer of the power of the universe and knowing that there are reasons for the things that happen kind of divinely. So when I was tapped on the shoulder and suggested to open a wellness kitchen, 
so that we would have a place to provide healing meals and broth, nutrition and culinary education to people who are dealing with a health crisis, all I could think to myself was, you want me to do what? <laughs> and then she ta also tapped me on the shoulder the second time and said, and to provide these meals for free so that everybody has an opportunity to, for survival. But all I can think of then was, but how? So the universe once again provided a way, sent me my love, Mark Molini, my rock and my, my best supporter. <laughs> my mom is here today, a two-time cancer survivor. She's my inspiration and continues to guide her four daughters and seven granddaughters on thriving in life. Beautiful Millie Drum, our board president, and my staff, who are all here today, are true believers and visionaries in what we do. Plus, we have about 40 to 50 volunteers each week coming in and doing all of the, the work that we do to be sure that everybody is having that fighting chance. One of our greatest testimonials came from a woman who had a liver transplant. She lives by herself, and she called me one Friday afternoon. I was at the kitchen by myself as well. She told me how difficult it was for her to eat. Uh, number one, she really lacked an appetite after the surgery, but number two, she says, and I live alone, and she started to cry. So, you know, both of us were crying then. Uh, but she then said, but the reason that I called is I want you to know that every time I eat a meal from the wellness kitchen, it's as if I'm sitting there and all the volunteers are sitting around my table with me. She says, that's the kind of energy that I need to heal and to recover from this. And that's a powerful energy of love and healing intent that we all try to put into the meals every day so that somebody at home gets to feel that healing. They lift that lid and they can feel the love coming out. I always say, leave the egos out at the door. We don't have ego in here. Uh, you know, we have dropped things on the ground, we have burned things, and it's like, okay, we can still do it again. <laughs> we run to the store and go get more product. But it's because we want that love and that healing intent in the food. I know that it sounds like a lot of woo-woo to some, but it truly works, and the people, the people are feeling that. Other sources of joy come to us when someone tells, them, tells us that their bone density numbers have gone up 6% because of our bone broths. A Stanford doctor was astounded about how quickly one of his patients survived and a, a complete or healed after a complete hip recovery surgery. Such joy is felt when our patrons who are receiving our meals blended because they're in using feeding tubes tell us that they've gained a pound. That's huge. But the biggest reward of all is when someone comes in through our doors arms raised above their heads exclaiming, I am cancer free. So it makes me proud to have said yes to that universe call. We're in a growing mold. The need for expansion is great. We have a goal to reach down to our friends at the Mission Hope Cancer Center in Santa Maria. So I ask you, powerful room of women doers, to join us join our board of directors, join us as sponsors, help us by supporting and guiding our ship so we may continue our work and help even more folks in need, especially our Hispanic community, our children who are dealing with illness, and continue giving support and hope to our families and caregivers. Thank you to the Women's Legacy Fund, the Community Foundation of San Luis Obispo, Cuesta College, my dear friend Millie Drum, for this honor, this nomination, and for this award. I am so, so blessed. Thank you. We need some Kleenex up here, Aaron. No, I'm serious. Are you getting me some? 
Thank you. Award number two, Community and Public Service Volunteer Award. Awarded to a woman who has distinguished herself as a volunteer by providing outstanding service to the community. We need to get 3,000 nominations for this one. We have so many volunteers in this community. It's unbelievable. It's such a blessing. Leanne Fisher is going to introduce this year's award winner, Shelley Higginbotham. Uh, please, will you both join me on stage? And she Tripping, no falls. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. I, you have to stand. I, oh, you're so. <laughs> see, we clash. We didn't even work out our <laughs> As I prepared this introduction, it strikes me that in a time of program cutbacks and belt tightening, the need for volunteerism is greater than ever. We are blessed to live in a community that has an abundance of talented and generous people who offer their time, skills, resources, and hearts to various causes. You are here today, and I thank you all. My name's Leanne Fisher, and I have the pleasure of introducing this year's recipient of the Women of Distinction Volunteer of the Year Award to Shelley Higginbotham. As Webster describes volunteer, it is one who is unpaid for services rendered. Moreover, Shelley's a volunteer advocate. Advocates passionately support and urge their point in the face of apathy. Advocates use the same passion to inform citizens about various conditions in an effort to motivate them into action, often acting as a liaison between organizations and the public. I think this embodies what we're celebrating about Shelley today. She is hardworking, energetic, and passionate. As a result, she's infectious. Not only is she infectious about who she's working with, but what she's working on. She educates and promotes programs. She inspires action and participation. Not surprising, she'll be the first to roll up her sleeves, pick up a shovel, dial a phone, ladle a bowl of soup, or on occasion wear a costume, and deliver a singing telegram to raise funds and increase awareness for a cause. For those of you who have not met Shelley, I'd suggest you find the opportunity to do so. A word of warning. She, <laughs> you too might find yourself reluctantly wearing a silly costume, singing a jingle for a fundraising activity, all the while loving every minute of it. She is a great recruiter. Undoubtedly, you'll find her thoughtful, charismatic, and persuasive. She has the genuine interest and capacity to speak to those without a platform or a voice. One of her greatest strengths is her ability to bridge gaps between opposing relationships, finding equitable compromise for all. I have worked with Shelley as a board member. I have witnessed her diligent efforts to be informed so that she would be more effective for cause or citizenry. Let me share some of Shelley's volunteer history, and this is only part of it because I, don't, I was told five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she is a former board member, past president, board emeritus of the Child Development Resource Center of the Central Coast, a nonprofit organization that provides educational and therapeutic programming that focuses on protecting and healing children while providing mental health support services to families in need in San Luis Obispo County. With determination, and I mean that underscored, Shelley and the board negotiated contracts for the purchase of buildings from the Department of Education and a long-term land lease with the County of San Luis Obispo, which was a huge win on behalf of the center, thereby creating a permanent home for the center and the families it serves. Going over and above is what she does. I recall that on one occasion, the executive director from the center had left the position vacant. She stepped in as interim director and ran, ran the program until a new director had been found. In 2002, Shelley began serving the city of Pismo Beach, initially on the Parks and Recreation Committee, Commission, then as a member of city council, and ultimately was elected to mayor of Pismo Beach three times. As, I, <clears throat> excuse me, as I'm sure you can imagine, there were countless volunteer hours spent in these positions. During her tenure, she restored integrity and public trust to a formerly discordant council, creating fiscal soundness, setting standards, and raising the bar for the future administrations. 
She has worked with Land Conservancy to create the Pismo Preserve, protecting this land for our use and the benefit of future generations. As lead conduit with Clifford Chapman, she was dedicated to establishing the historical Chapman Estate in Shell Beach as public property. And most recently, she termed out as president of Five Cities Homeless Coalition, an organization that serves homeless families and individuals of South County, San Luis Obispo. By providing resources, support, and hope needed to become self-sufficient, productive community members. With successful fundraising events such as Empty Bowls, she and the board raised $600,000 annually to serve this growing population. She also volunteers her time at the Warring Center, sponsored by the coalition. Shelley has served as a member and past president of the San Luis Obispo Council of Governments. She is past president of the Regional Transit Authority, as well as South County Transit Authority. She was a member of the San Luis Obispo Economic Vitality Commission. She's currently a board member of People's Self-Help Housing, as well as a member of the League of Women Voters. She has served on the Grant Review Committee for the Women's Legacy Foundation. With Altrusa, she assists in fundraising events. She's coordinated ben benefit golf tournaments. She has hosted foreign exchange students. And as a parent to three amazing kids, she volunteered as a chaperone, van driver, and snack shop attendant for the Arroyo Grande High School girls and boys water polo teams. We <laughs> lost. <laughs> Additionally, Shelley participates with the New Life Church Funeral Ministry, assisting with family receptions. She does this and so much more, often quietly on her own time with her own resources, as she and her husband Sonny did by opening their hearts and home to a young man who needed refuge from his family life, unofficially fostering him so that he could complete high school. I don't know about you, but I'm inspired. Remember Webster's definition of volunteer? One who is unpaid for services rendered, this lady serves. So today, I'm offering a challenge to each of us to dig a little deeper, look around, find a neighbor or a cause that could use our time and experience, and say yes, volunteer. Without further delay, may I introduce to you this year's Women of Distinction Volunteer of the Year Award recipient, Shelley Higginbotham. I didn't know where to hang this name tag. <laughs> so, but it is me. This is me. Um, thank you, Leanne. It's such an honor to be here and considered a woman of distinction in the area of volunteering. And since we're recognizing volunteers, I'd like to take a moment and recognize all of the people who work to make this event possible. Could we give them a hand, please? Um, Winston Churchill is quoted as saying, I know it should have been a woman, sorry. Um, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. So I was fortunate to be raised by parents who were great role models about volunteerism. It was very important. And my dad is 88 years old in about four days. And he still, every Thursday, goes to the local senior center volunteers and if ever there's a, any kind of holiday or anything that he can decorate for he is there decorating Cinco de Mayo anything and he is so excited about that and every Memorial Day you'll see him at the town cemetery putting flags on every single grave so this is the kind of role model I had so I would be remiss in not recognizing my husband Uh, Robert Higginbotham and my three extraordinary children who, by the way, Casey has risen, has set the bar high because he spoke at Visit Slow or Good Morning Slow this morning, I heard. Congratulations. Um, my extraordinary children and my husband have given me the opportunity to volunteer. And you, you know, you all do this. We get our checkbooks out. We make our husbands get our checkbooks out. And then we encourage them on Saturday or Sunday to come with us or whatever we're doing, cleanup day. And then, of course, we say, hey, kids, guess what we're doing? They think we're going someplace fun. No. 
you're serving soup, you're cleaning up the beach. And so we have now expanded our footprint by including our families. So they have made it possible for me to do all of these things. So thank you. <laughs> um, but more importantly, I'm inspired by all of you. I have terrific friends who are big brothers, big sisters. They do the golf tournaments. They drive cancer patients. They buy cookbooks. Um, my friend Linda Reitner came to my house for Bunko, and she said, I've never written more checks in my entire life. <laughs> Your campaign, cookbooks. We had kids coming to the door selling things. You know, we buy enchiladas. We give to the Salvation Army, to the bell ringers. All of you make this community amazing. And so I accept this award for all of you. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. I did hear, I can't remember your name, that spoke today at Good Morning Slow? Casey. Uh, he and his brother, who I didn't get to hear, I, any of you there this morning? Seven months paddling from Alaska on a large paddleboard. Seven months paddling from Alaska to Mexico. <laughs> Unbelievable. And when he was done with his talk and we were all going, you did what? And he talked about, you know, getting shoved out to sea 12 miles and whatever and stuff. And he says, what I learned after that is you can do anything. We're getting that message again today, tonight, with these people here. So congratulations on that. Well done. Uh, let's see, which one we got here? Progress for Women Award. Awarded to a woman whose commitment to a particular program or an issue of special relevance uh, to women has helped improve the quality of life for women. We'll have Lori Morgan come to the stage, but she won't be joined by this year's award winner, Jana Nichols, and we'll explain why. She probably is out, like you should be, Shelley, looking for a new place to rent. <laughs> Did we read in the Trib this morning that you're losing your lease on the Five Cities Homeless Coalition? All right, so now we all have another job to do. Please uh, welcome Lori Morgan. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here to present this award to Jana, although unfortunately she couldn't be here today. You're going to hear from her, though, with technology like we were talking about before. She is going to send you a message by video. Um, she's very disappointed she couldn't be here, but she really, truly appreciates this honor. I also want to say both of the two recipients, I don't know about the kitchen personally, but I know a very good friend who heavily relied on that kitchen when she was going through cancer, and it made all the difference in her life. So, so inspiring to hear your story and to meet you here today. And I've had the privilege of working with Shelley on the Five Cities Homeless Coalition Board um, for the past several years. And again, such an inspirational person who just gives and gives and gives. And I think that's you know the key to this. It's all about, I love the quote about, it's what we give that makes a difference in life. And um, I think Jana is a great example of that. Jana's been the ED for the Five Cities Homeless Coalition for the last five years. And prior to that, she was one of the people in, who successfully was um, wrote the grant and got the funding through the Clap Road funds to start something in South County for homeless services. It's been a tough road. Um, it's been very difficult. Even though we had funding, there was a lot of not in my backyard sentiment. And so, Jana, and this is so Jana being her, her was like, okay, if we can't do it this way, then we'll do it another way. And so, how Jana has done that is by creating partnerships and collaborations with other partners in the South County to make sure that homeless families and homeless um, clients have at least the basic needs that they need in order to survive. 
Before she did the Five Cities Homeless Coalition, she was also um, executive director of the uh, United Way. She worked at the Slow Blood Bank, and she also worked at the Slow YMCA. Pretty much her whole professional life has been dedicated to serving her community. And I think another theme that we heard um, consistently today is about people not wanting a lot of recognition, and that is truly Jana. She does not like to be the center of attention. She doesn't like the, you know, to call attention to what she does. But day in and day out, she works so hard to help serve families um, in the South County. I worked with the program, the Family Resource Centers down in South County. We worked with a lot of families. A lot of those were homeless. And Jenna just has a heart of gold. It was kind of the joke around the office because it was, we always hoped that Jana would answer the phone when we called to ask for help because she could not say no. And her staff would say, no, don't talk to Jana because we don't have the funding. But Jana was like, we're going to find a way to do this. And she always did. Really, really an inspirational person. Um, she is, some of the programs I wanted to talk about, and Shelly could talk more about this because she is still on the board, but is that the warming center down in South County. And again, it's been cold and it's been rainy this year. And so many clients have nowhere to go on those cold rainy nights. Jana and the board have made sure that there was a place. Not an easy thing to do because again, we tried to find space for that and it was hard to find a space that would host that. So Jana, sweet talked along with the board, the county and the property owner of the Department of Social Services building to hold the warming center there. And I don't know, Shelley, if you know numbers, I should have gotten numbers about the number of people served this year. Over 3,800 um, beds uh, or served nights of people having a warm place to sleep, dry, comfortable food. And actually, I mean, that makes, it's made a huge, huge difference. Jana also worked very closely um, with Good Samaritan down in South Ca in Santa Maria to create a veterans program to make sure that homeless veterans would have the services they need and the help they need to get into housing. She's worked very closely with the school district to create programs for homeless kids. The numbers of homeless kids down in South County is incredible. Jana has her eye on that, and she's making sure that those kids have what they need, school clothes, backpacks, um, all those basic needs that we take so for granted. Uh, it's, that's happening through the Five Cities Homeless Coalition. Um, she also created or helped to create a program for the medically fragile because there was a consistent theme happening of people being released from the hospital without any place to go. And so Jana cr helped create this program so that we can provide respite beds for people and they can go into a hotel or housing until they're strong enough to be able to take care of themselves because what they were seeing was that these people would end up coming right back to the hospital. And so in partnership with AG Community Hospital, created the medical respite program program to make sure those people got the services that they need. Jana is, um, has a huge, huge heart. There are every, every opportunity to be out there and supporting people. She does with her own pocketbook. She writes checks a lot, doesn't want any recognition, doesn't want to be on her t-shirt, doesn't want anything to didn't call attention to herself, but she just does it with a big, big heart. She is a true collaborator. She is a problem solver. She's a very creative thinker. She's an excellent grant writer. And she's a caring, compassionate, genuinely nice human being. I really wish that she could be here today to accept this award because um, I think it would be good for her <laughs> to be up here and hear all of this because she really um, is an unsung hero in the South County and the work that she does. But in lieu of that, she did present, provide a little video that we're going to show you to um, tell you thank you for this award. Hey, everybody. Sorry I can't be with you today but I wanted to just express my sincere gratitude for this recognition. I am truly humbled to be recognized for this award and to be in the company of a cadre of really wonderful women who are being recognized today. It's, uh, it's, it's very special and I, I'm sincerely honored um, to, to receive this recognition. It's interesting because as people know me, I am not necessarily one to advocate for any particular group. And so as I'm being recognized for the progress of women, 
it gave me pause to rethink a bit of my work, and more importantly, the work that we still have ahead. And I believe more than ever, we have a need to stand together and work together to build a stronger San Luis Obispo County. An advocate for those who are, like women, marginalized in some way. So whether uh, it is women, those of color, those of different faith or different sexual orientation, or in other ways being marginalized, I encourage you to rededicate yourself with me this year to work even harder to make a better place for all of our neighbors here in San Luis Obispo County. Um, for those who don't know him, this is my husband, Bob, and we're not with you today because we've got some milestone family events happening. Bob is turning 70, it's his birthday, and coincidentally, just nine days apart, so is my brother, and he's a pretty nice guy, um, and I like seeing him too. And so we had made plans as a family to go to Zion and Bryce to celebrate these two milestone birthdays together. Uh, and that's where you'll find me today, is in Bryce, uh, and as hard as Bob tried to figure out how to fly me home, there was no way to get from there to here uh, in such a short period of time. So I can't be with you, but I am most honored by this recognition, and again, by all the good work that we are doing in San Luis Obispo County. Thanks so much. That is right on. That is so Jana. I can tell she had a cold because her, her voice is low anyway, but it was really low. Uh, but I saw her at Costco last week, and I said, what are you going to do? And she said, well, Bob's been trying to figure out how to fly me to and from. No, you know, no, she knew she was going to send a video, but it, it sounded like fun. <laughs> but she said, uh, yeah, it's going to be really rough. I'm not going to be able to be there because I'm going to, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. She's great. She's great. Um, what are we up to, number four? Susan Dressler Educational Leadership Award. This one is for contributions to the educational community or to the field of education or to schools or to kids or D, all of the above in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the case of our recipient today who's been making a, an impact. Well, you'll hear the details. So let's welcome Alan Cooper uh, to the stage with this year's award winner. Myla Vyokovic Labar. As you can see, I hope, I'm a man. Oh, yeah, welcome. And I don't know if I'm setting an unhealthy precedent in introducing a woman of distinction. I'm an educator and a natural born ham but I'm a terrible extemporaneous speaker, so please forgive me, I have to read this. And it wasn't easy because I had to condense 40 pages down to three. <laughs> <laughs> and I will go fast, I promise you. As a teacher in the San Luis School District for 33 years at both San Luis High and Laguna Middle School, Myla Vujovic Labar has devoted her talents, talents to serving our youth. Myla has impressive academic credentials and, like me, I hope, is a lifelong learner. learner. At UC Santa Barbara, Myla secured her K-12 multiple teaching credential and her single subject credentials in Spanish and history. She's credentialed also in social science. She's a publisher and she published the Spanish Grammar Notebook, offers an online course in learning Spanish. Along with a double major in Spanish and history, she holds a master's degree in educational administration from Cal Poly. And by the way, she earned that degree while teaching and raising her family. Myla has demonstrated extraordinary leadership in combating drug use among our youth. She founded the Slow Chapter of Students Against Driving Drunk, with the support of administrators, she helped to establish SAD chapters in high schools throughout the county. With the support of the California Highway Patrol and the County Drug and Alcohol Services, SAD began to host countywide annual conferences. 
Through a grant from PG&E, she was able to begin hosting drug-free county graduation parties, which started to be known as grad nights. She co-hosted an anti-drug speaker, and there were two seatings of 2,000 people at San Luis High. From that presentation, she and her colleagues helped to develop the student assistance program, which increased the availability of counseling for teens and support for their families. She helped SAD transition to County Friday Night Live, not Saturday Night Live, with the assistance of personnel from the County Drug and Alcohol Services. Secondly, Myla is a leader in providing positive alternatives for teens. Myla started the Mayor's Award for Community Service at Laguna Middle School that she continues to oversee. She became one of the co-founders of the Endowment for the Advancement of Children, or otherwise known as TEACH Foundation, which is dedicated to enriching the curricula and is a permanent endowed fund that enables grants for unified school district teachers to support special services, supplies, and opportunities for their students. She was a key organizer of the Teach Telethon, which featured students singing, dancing, and acting. She organized the 24-hour Relay Challenge, and with uh, a core of adult and student volunteers, net profits grew to over $40,000 annually. Community donations have resulted in an endowment of over $350,000. She also helped to develop the ongoing San Luis Coastal Unified District all-class reunion. It's become a tradition. She worked with the Youth Sports Association and the Army Corps of Engineers to get the Damian Garcia Sports Fields constructed. She has embraced an offer from two local Kiwanis clubs to start a builder's club on our middle school campus. This club will help students develop leadership skills and give them access to positive adult mentors within the community. Finally, Myla has fulfilled leadership responsibilities in her spare time, by the way, at, at both the school and community levels. Over the years, she's participated on management teams, school site councils, district budget committees. She has served on the executive board, for the San Luis Coastal Teachers Association. She served on the board for the Endowment for Advancement of Children. She's co-chair of the Elk Scholarships for graduating seniors. She serves on the District Wellness Committee. She sits on the board of directors at Sunny Acres. She served as president of Save San Luis Obispo and on the side she ran for council in 2016. Permit me to share with you a quote that exemplifies Myla. Never look down on anyone unless you are helping them up. Myla was interviewed by Real Simple Magazine. Frankly, I never heard of it, but that's fine. <laughs> in, in 2006, for an article on community volunteerism. The feature included Myla's basic tips for volunteers. And I should follow these, I'm serious. These include don't burn bridges, good manners never go out of style, be the change you want to, want to see in the world, and never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Good afternoon. I have traveled the world and considered this county to be one of the best places on earth to live. Why may you ask? Yeah. <laughs> Why may you ask? Some may think the scenic beauty, quality of life, and fresh air. For me, it is the people. In addition to my immediate family and wonderful children, my diverse group of friends and students here in San Luis Obispo County are the proverbial wind beneath my wings. For me, this honor reflects over three decades of great memories and immense personal satisfaction. First, I would like to thank Cuesta College and the Community Foundation for this award. I applaud everything that both of your organizations do to fulfill the hopes and dreams of people determined to make a positive difference in the lives of others. I would also like to thank the San Luis Coastal Unified School District, my employer for the last 33 years. Support of administrators, school board members, teaching colleagues, parents, students, and volunteers have all played an important part in bringing programs that I initiated to fruition. 
My best mentors, my parents, had a strong work ethic. They stressed the importance of good manners and the critical need to always maintain a sense of humor. I thank them for appreciating my ab abundance of energy. They consistently const uh, encouraged me to be creative when searching for solu solutions to difficult problems and to always believe in myself. I also want to thank my dear younger daughter, Georgia, who is here today. She encourages and inspires me. She also makes me laugh. Georgia is tenacious. She shares my dedication for making the world a better place and my love for adventure. Looking out at this crowd, I sense that everyone here today must know the immense joy I feel daily to be in a career that I absolutely adore. I feel so blessed. In closing, the business of education is at an exciting and challenging time. There are advances in technology, financial woes, and student populations with diverse home lives. There is also the metamorphosis of the dynamics of both local and global workplaces that our students need to be prepared for. Let's all continue to work together passionately for a better future with consistent compassion and enthusiasm. Thank you again. Does anybody know if men get awards like these? I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, Boy Scouts have Scout Master of the Year or whatever. No? Roxanne, they don't? Well, I'm just thinking about, so we've heard about government, and we've heard about schools, and we've heard about needs being met. We've heard about all of these things where the people have had jobs, generally, had raised families or had other things to do, and yet they went beyond because what they were working on still needed more, you know? So the school system still needed more, and the community still needs more than, than our, um, our resources can do. And I just think it's, it's I mean, I'm being so s silly here, but it's because it's so obvious, but it's so rewarding uh, to be around you all who do that. And I know everybody in this room does that. And we see a need and we fill it, or we try to, yeah, the needs change and the needs get bigger and they never go away kind of a thing. But um, I don't know if men, I'm sure men are doing this too and they need to be recognized as well. That was a long-winded way of saying it, but um, thank you for reminding me, Alan, that there are men in the room who do good work too. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Gil. Yeah, I got your note here about that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, I remember when no men came to these things. Maybe it wasn't this, but, you know, the Women's Legacy Fund or some, something honoring women, and you couldn't find a man in the place. I don't know if we scared them off. <laughs> oh, my brain just explodes with ideas and, and thoughts and memories and all. But it's, we all need to be in this together, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, enough. <laughs> Thus endeth the sermon. Um, Roxanne Carr, in addition to having holding my first mortgage at Arcs Mortgage, uh, has been an interspr. <laughs> Too late, man. <laughs> the checks in the mail. Yeah, um, has been um, inspiring people for a long, long time, and um, so she. I'm talking out of turn. Let me get back to my script. The Grace N. Mitchell Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> a very special award named after a very special woman, uh, given to a woman with distinguished service and dedication to women in more than one of the three categories. And over an extended length of time throughout her professional career. Oh, this isn't your award, Roxanne. I'm, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> please welcome Cheryl Miller, Mary Trudeau, and Roxanne Carr to the stage. Good afternoon. I'm Cheryl Willie. 
And I'm so excited to be here and honored that our nomination was chosen from a list of very worthy candidates. Roxanne is truly the embodiment of what this award means. For those of you who know Roxanne, one more can be said. And for those of you who may not know her, well, you're in for a surprise as you've heard. And I encourage you to introduce yourself and find out about her. Over the years, she's worn many hats in our community, both professionally and personally. But through all that, she remains the best mom, grandma, great-grandma, friend, neighbor, volunteer, boss, and mentor that anyone could have. In business, she's a force to be reckoned with, as the history of her achievements bears witness. But right now, her main business face is with the mortgage house. I'm her assistant there. Um, here in San Luis Obispo. She helped co-found the company in 1995, and she remains a senior vice president and division president. The neat thing is, is that her employees just flourish under her guidance, because it's so rare now that a boss will work with their employees instead of over them. I, it's short and sweet, but I, I can't think of anyone more deserving of this award, and I'm so glad that Roxanne is not only my boss, but my friend as well. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mary Trudeau, and I, um, and I, these fabulous speakers that I've been listening to, I'm not one of those, so I'm going to read it, and hopefully I will be able to get this out. I made it short to make it safe. Um, um, so I'm incredibly honored to be standing here speaking to you about my boss, my mentor, my friend, Roxanne Carr. Roxanne truly is an amazing woman, as you guys have heard, and um, is an inspiration to all that know her, especially those that are fortunate enough to work with her and work for her. Just as Cheryl, just as Cheryl said, uh, Roxanne is a force to be reckoned with and um, is a mover and a shaker in our community and um, seems to have a limitless amount of energy. Roxanne is a woman with a huge heart, giving of herself, to, um, and she truly cares and is concerned for everyone and anyone, especially for those that are in need, including our furry friends. Uh, and she allows you to bring dogs to work and, you know, <laughs> very sweet. Roxanne is being recognized and honored today with a list of amazing women, and we, all of us at the Mortgage House, want to congratulate every honoree. I'm always proud to say that I work with and for Roxanne Carr, and I speak for everyone at the Mortgage House when I say that we are all so very proud that Roxanne is being recognized with this very well-deserved award. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I was hoping they would read the nomination so I could see what they said about me. I have no idea what they said or how I am included with this amazing group of women, both in the past and today. Um, uh, when I got to thinking about what I was going to say today, uh, something popped into my mind right away. The last time I stood on a stage for the Women's Legacy Fund, I had spent weeks soul searching, it was a nerve wracking process for a speech that I was asked to give to women who might have had problems in their past, in their growing up, in their personal lives, or professional lives. Anyways, I agreed to make this speech and the woman who asked me to make it is sitting back there at that table. I still haven't quite forgiven her. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but I, I made that speech to about 400 people that day sharing all my innermost secrets, and many that my, even my husband and my family didn't know. It was a real challenge, and I'm glad I did it. And today is another challenge. I, uh, it's different. It isn't nerve-wracking and soul-searching, but it is a challenge because I just don't know how to thank everyone who has given me this amazing award. When Aaron called me to say I'd been selected by the committee, I, I cried a little, and I, I just couldn't believe that this was happening to me. This is such an amazing community, which you've all heard about just a bit, 
and those of us who live here, we know how fabulous it is. I want to thank, Al, first of all, the two who nominated me for this award, and the committee that granted me the award, and all of you that support the Women of Distinction, the Women's Legacy Fund, the Community Foundation, and Western College. It wouldn't be the same without all of our support. I want to thank my family, who are my rock, and my extended beloved family, and you, you probably think it's a commercial, but it's not, the Mortgage House. <laughs> they are here in force today, for which I'm so grateful. And I, and I have to make particular mention of my boss. Yes, I do have a boss. Um, everybody thinks I'm the boss, but I'm not. Yes. The CEO of our company, who drove all the way from Woodland Hills to be here today, Ira Cohen. Please stand. We all adore him, and you can see why, because we all stick together and we work hard, and we give back to work. I mean, we all believe that giving back is important, and we each do it in our own way. Some of it's small, some of it's large, but we have to keep giving back and sharing whatever we can with our community to make it better and to help those who need our help. Again, I'm so, so thankful, and I hope I have said enough to say that I'm, I'm appreciative of this award. I just can't believe it. Thank you so much. Hang on just a second. Roxanne, hang on just a second. Pay attention. Pay attention to them. It's their wonderful. Well, they're great. Thank you. Thank you. I should have mentioned you were the MC that day. I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, stay up here. Since nobody read your bio or anything, let, please be seated. Um, well, no, really. Yeah. You started a foundation uh, at the 20th anniversary of the Mortgage House. What, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, with the help of you know, my boss, as I said, Ira, and all of those at the Mortgage House, we wanted to, um, we wanted to do something special for, to celebrate our 20th anniversary. We're in mortgage banking, and it's very rare that a mortgage banker lasts more than a couple of years. And uh, we, we hit our 20th year, and we wanted to do something other than just have a party in the parking lot. So we started an, uh, a community fund that is monitored by the Slow Community Foundation for $20,000. Go with the 20th year, yes. <laughs> and we add to it to keep it growing with every loan we close. And each year, we make awards to needy people that may be involved in some way with housing. It has to go through a nonprofit, but it could be for education or for housing or something that has to do with housing. But it was our way of saying thank you, San Luis Obispo County, for supporting us all these years. And you know, a business has to give back also. So that was our way of doing it. That's so just one you. example. Yes. Thank you. Karen Tackett is doing there uh, is giving uh, the recipients the recognition uh, from our elected officials uh, so they get a goodie bag and, and all. By the way, you get to take the cups home uh, and actually the women in the, oh, you can have several if you want, if you got that excited about them. Um, the volunteers with the Community Foundation uh, would rather not clean up. Uh, so just feel free to take what you want. Um, what an amazing display today of the, uh, one of the wonderful resources. I'm in human resources, and this is a human resource. Boy, uh, I'm just so pleased for all of you and for us to be able to, to um, recognize and, and have the tools to recognize all of the good works that so many of you do. I'm thinking more about 1977. Did you know that in June of 19 1977, some poor slob got hit by lightning for the seventh time? So if you ever think something can't happen, it can. 
You can go for seven months and paddle your way down the Pacific coast, or you can be hit by lightning seven times. You can raise the awareness and the recognition of women. You can do great things when you reach out to the, uh, to the people next to you, as was pointed out today. Um, you cannot be afraid of the woo-woo, uh, because it really is where we connect. Um, you, using your family, using your resources, using your coworkers, using whatever inspiration, even if it's Winston Churchill, um, all of those, whatever you can do to find a way to do something that feeds you, um, I urge you to please do it. In closing, I want to read a poem. One of my favorite poets, Lucille Clifton. I was fortunate enough to um, discover her poetry in 1987, and then in 1988, when she was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, um, I actually got a chance to interview her, and she read this poem uh, on the air. I'll leave you to this. It's called Female. There is an Amazon in us. She is the secret we do not have to learn, the strength that opens us beyond ourselves. Birth is our birthright. We smile our mysterious smiles. So we're smiling for you all today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Quest to College. Thank you, Women's Legacy Fund. Thank you, recipients. Thank you, and still we rise. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>